Hello, my name is Melanie Stambaugh, and it's an honor to serve the 25th District in the State House of Representatives. We are in the third week of session, and most of my time thus far has been spent in the House Committee rooms hearing testimony and considering legislation. In the House Education Committee, where I serve as Assistant Ranking Member, we had a valuable work session on the implications of the Every Student Succeeds Act, a piece of legislation recently passed by Congress. The act reduces the federal government's oversight role of education and provides a new approach to accountability, including more flexibility in testing. I will remain actively involved in this discussion as the implementation of the federal act occurs beginning in the 2017-2018 school year. We have also heard numerous bills in the Education Committee, including a bill that would provide certification options for paraeducators, as well as potential solutions to our current teacher shortage in our schools. One such solution is providing alternative routes for educators to earn their teaching certification. This would allow professionals and industry to have easier access to bringing their expertise into the classroom. In the Higher Education Committee, we heard the bill I sponsored, House Bill 2451, which creates partnerships between our K-12 schools and our college students. So often, we talk about the high school to college pipeline, but rarely do we look at the opportunities we have for our college students to engage with our younger students, providing mentoring and meaningful academic support. I am hopeful of the potential of such a partnership to grow, as members have shown great support for enhancing the connections between our students of all ages. The Higher Education Committee also had a work session on affordability in higher ed and we discussed how college students incur greater costs beyond tuition alone. I look forward to the upcoming hearing on my House Bill 2680, which would reduce the cost of textbooks for students in our four-year universities by providing competitive faculty grants for the creation of open education resources. The bill will be heard alongside other textbook cost measures that provide options for our CTC students and additional incentives for open education resources. I look forward to continuing the conversation about working students and student debt. In the House Transportation Committee, which I recently became a member of, we have had work sessions on the Washington State Patrol, specifically looking at ways to increase recruitment of troopers. Additionally, we have heard an update on current commuter trip reduction efforts and also heard minor transportation bills that would benefit small businesses who need access to short portions of state highways. This upcoming week, we will spend more time hearing bills and then voting on them. In addition to the work in my four committees, I have dropped three additional bills that have bipartisan support. The first is House Bill 2681, which would allow pharmacists to prescribe contraceptives to women 18 years of age and older. Women currently face barriers in accessing birth control, waiting for doctor's appointments and expensive exams, for example. Statistics show that women who have access to birth control have higher education levels and career achievement. By allowing pharmacists to play a key role in increasing access to contraceptives for women, we will help prevent unwanted pregnancies and empower women in our communities. The second bill is House Bill 2885, which would create a Maternal Mortality Review Commission. This commission would conduct a comprehensive, multidisciplinary review of maternal death. Similar legislation was passed in California, and after the review and implementation of new procedures, the number of maternal deaths in California was reduced by two-thirds. Finally, I have introduced the SOAR Act, strengthening opportunities and rehabilitation for juvenile offenders to improve our juvenile justice system. The bill would add reintegration and rehabilitation of juvenile offenders as a goal in the Juvenile Justice Act's intent section. This is important, as are other changes that increase prosecutorial and judicial discretion over the charging and sentencing of certain juvenile offenses. We need to make steps toward keeping our first-time juvenile offenders from becoming repeat offenders, and I believe the SOAR Act would help in that effort. This past weekend, I joined Senator Dammeyer and Representative Zeiger for a two-hour coffee town hall in downtown Fife. We discussed higher education affordability, challenges in our healthcare system, and key concerns of 25th District residents. We will be holding additional town halls across our district in the upcoming weeks. Stay tuned for details. Please feel free to contact me with any ideas, questions, or concerns you have as the session progresses. It is truly an honor to serve the 25th District. Thank you.